she was a college student. The memory is still fresh. Uh, I thought she was extremely attractive. And uh, she paid me money and I married her. <laughs> and it happened right here on this spot? Uh, right here. <laughs> or, or, or over there. Wait a minute. Or it might have been over there. They were married in 89 and had a baby last year. They still visit the French Quarter. He still hangs out and watches football. Of course, it's a little different now. How does this make you feel? Uh, very strange. Are, are you that or like a union leader waiting to bust up a strike or something? I don't know. At age 38, John Goodman is the working man's movie star, a character actor with leading man clocks. I bounced here <laughs> five years ago at Mardi Gras. I passed out in here one time. I didn't pass out, I fell asleep. Bright, open, and accessible. He's the sort of guy you want to buy a beer and tell the joke you just heard. Even if he doesn't know you from Adam, it's okay. It's just John. Hi. How you doing? Right, Come on. Right. Are you from Springfield? Yeah, I have a sister. You and still we live in Springfield? He grew up outside St. Louis in the town of Afton, Missouri. His father died when he was almost two, and John, his brother and sister, grew up poor with mom. Virginia Goodman took in washing, babysat, worked a cash register, did whatever to provide for the kids. In school, John was a curious hybrid of jock and actor, an offensive lineman who sang in the high school musicals. Since his football team rarely won, John stuck with the acting. He majored in theater at Southwest Missouri State University, then headed for New York. Into the first turn, he flies! He was the power of all 18 horses! To make ends meet, he became the king of the 32nd spot. Rugged and disarmingly normal, John was the every man who could sell any man anything. <laughs> yeah, Levi's blue jeans are tools. They fit your body like a good hammer fits your hand, nice and comfortable. You could get even fewer cavities than Teddy, because he didn't have this crust at your age. That's fresh scent. And that combination of rich lather and unbeatable deodorant soap protection. Still the best deodorant soap. Next came a succession of standout character parts. In Raising Arizona, he yelled. Ah! A lot. Ah! In Everybody's All-American, he wept. I love you, ghost. I would never do nothing to get you in trouble. In Sea of Love, he sang. I want to tell you how much I love you. I have been having a dream about, you know, sex. But that doesn't mean I'm cheating on you. But John would probably not have become a household name without a little help from Roseanne. Man, I'm dreaming, not cheating. You're dreaming about cheating. I can't help it. So who is she, Dan? One of those women in your magazine? Oh, give me some credit. You think I'd go for that? It's just a little redhead down at the hardware store in the mall. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> Through the character of Dan Connor, John has bucked all stereotypes and portrayed an average working man with dignity, intelligence, and wit. So she's got hormones. So? Why should she just get away with this? How about me? When is it my turn? When does everybody have to tiptoe around me? When do I get my PMS? <laughs> now in his third season, he's weathered numerous staff firings, a lousy press, an irrepressible co-star, and a near impossible work situation. Perhaps the biggest miracle is that he has come out of it smelling like a rose. He's publicly most respectful of his co-star, Roseanne Barr, and above all, loyal. I'm here, and I'll be here forever and ever. Good golly, Miss Molly. You so lost the ball. The only problem, if you could call it that, is that John's movie career is exploding. In his new film, King Ralph, John gets first billing. The guy who likes to call himself Second Banana, the working-class hero, the character actor, is now a box office star. You're not the kind of girl I'm used to. You can spell, you wear clothes to work. You just have more class, I guess. John is enamored with the city of New Orleans, so we talked with him outside Moran's restaurant in the French Quarter. There are a handful of people in this world that are impossible to dislike. Yeah. John is one of them. 
John, in the past, you said that you're a character actor, you'd never be a leading man, nobody would want you for a leading man. Now you have King Ralph and you're the leading man. How do you feel about that? Go figure. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little strange to... I still don't consider myself a leading man. I may have more lines than anybody else in the movie, and uh, but it's, it's just another character. Do you get the girl? Yeah. You bet. So you're the leading man. Yeah. When did you decide you're going to be an actor? I mean, it wasn't a family that was involved in it, and you, you know... You about three months before I moved to New York. How, how, how come? Uh, well, I, I just spent five years getting a drama major, and I go, what am I going to do with it? Might as well use And I it. said to myself, if I don't go to New York and try it, I'm going to spend the rest of my life kicking myself in the rear because I didn't take a shot, and I had no idea what I was going to do anyway. You would not have been able to go to New York to study acting or be an actor if it weren't for your older brother. Right. He had been putting away, uh, you know, five, ten bucks here and there uh, for a while um, so I could go to graduate school or do something further my education. And um, I told him what I thought, and he said, well, you know, here's, uh, here's a grand, and uh, thanks, pal. You know, he gave it to me the day I graduated. And, uh, yeah, it, fi it financed the, the first few months in New York, and after that, I was set. Did you ever pay him back? Yeah, I bought him a car last year, so get off my back. <laughs> Took you all those years? I want a receipt. <laughs> but those were the good old days when you were hanging out at a watering hole called Cafe Central. Later made famous because the bartender was your great friend. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Did you ever think when you were going there every night that you might get a drinking problem? Oh, yeah. I did have a drinking problem. Did you really? Sure. Well, at the time, I looked at it as a drinking opportunity. How'd you stop it? Or do you... Uh, you it, it's... Well, excuse me, haven't you? No, it's uh, <laughs> still in the process of... Uh, it's slowing down. I, I, Was it really If a I hadn't slowed down, sure. If I hadn't slowed down, I'd, I'd be dead by now. Americans are obviously very happy with you the way you are. And the fact that you are a little heavy <laughs> makes them identify all the more. <laughs> are you happy with your weight? No, I'm not. Not at all. Um, I'm doing something about it, though. So maybe by the time this airs. Does it really bother you? Look at a fat guy. Yeah. yeah, sure it does. Does it bother Annabeth? No. That's sort of nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Did that sneak up on you, the weight? Oh, yeah, I worked at it, though. One brick at a time. Because I remember those commercials. I mean, I've seen them, and you were very, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh... Slim. I, I, I had a good 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I, well. and, uh, we, I had some fun during the 80s. Yeah. And now you're going to pay the price on the Yeah. <laughs> I know from seeing you here and there, I know you hate to talk about Roseanne. Roseanne is her problem, yours is your problem, it's a, but how do you stay above the fray? Uh, that was, that was never really that hard. I just, uh, you know, that was Rosie's, they were all Rosie's problems dealing with it, so I just kind of st stuck my head in the dressing room and never, uh, never bothered with it. I mean, you know, I'd hear her out and, um, help her out when I could by listening, but uh, I just wasn't, I didn't concern myself with it. But when people were getting fired and they came in and said to, to you, listen, John, you know, it's no, not my nobody fault. Said, nobody no, did. No. They sort of knew that you were not, yeah, you were going to be on the outside. Yeah, it's not my deal. I'm just a hired guy. Not my guy. department. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, the, my door says second banana. I, I don't deal. Suppose a script were written in which Roseanne became a widow, and your part was written up. <laughs> Would it break your heart? Um, no. It's tough to say. I mean, uh, I'm having fun now, and it's a good steady income. Um, but on the other hand, Johnny could be making movies and then having some time off and do plays and stuff. But on the other hand, it's good steady income and may never work again, so I don't know. You know, if it ended tomorrow, that would be it. I wouldn't walk out on it. Um, there we are. You were doing Shakespeare when the producers of Roseanne discovered you. 
Yeah. That's hard for people to believe. Go figure. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I was doing Eno Barbas and Anthony and Cleopatra, and I a phone call that said one of the producers of the Cosby Show wants to see you. They're thinking of doing a new sitcom with Roseanne Barr. And I don't know what the hell the two of them have to do with each other, but it's, it's a stretch. And you auditioned? Yeah, I, I went in and read with Rosie, and uh, we made each other laugh. And she looked at me and said, you don't do drugs, do you? I said, nope. All right. That was it? Yeah. And uh, then we read uh, a couple times. I walked out of there. I said, well, I got this. I just kind of knew it. All this from Shakespeare. He's turning yeah. over in his grave. Go brush up your Shakespeare, folks. <laughs> you kids at home. It's a high-paying career. <laughs> Were you with your wife when the baby was born? Yes, I was. It was a miracle. <laughs> it was... Um, <laughs> it was a little girl, you know. It, it looked like a little rubber doll. Uh, I think the first song she heard was Kathy's Clown by the Everly's Brothers, and she liked it. <laughs> and you and I held her up, and I showed her Los Angeles out the window, and she didn't like that. So, so you knew it was yours, all yeah, yours. You this, said this, that's is a, this is a country chick. Your life has changed so spectacularly in one year. A wife, a baby. <laughs> It's an awful different kind of life, isn't it, for you than it was, let's say, two years ago? Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of adjustment I I'm, uh, I still have to make. Um, from I, I lived alone for about 12 years, and uh, sometimes I, I wonder if I didn't bite off more than I could chew. But it's it's a great mouthful. <laughs>